Hello and welcome to Tales of the Neon Sea. So this is currently free on the Epic Games Store, so we're going to give it a go, see what it's all about. Prologue. What's past is prologue. Where the hell am I? My head feels like it's going to explode. Eek. Well, that wasn't me, but... Oh god! No thank you! I don't want to be near you. I probably should have gone into that. Oh! Please don't hurt me, please don't hurt me, please don't... In a bit. Not the best start. He's damn fast. Oh no. Oh no. And off again. Dot dot dot. Ouch. That hurt. Ugh. Can't believe I'm still alive. This fun guy must have broken my fall. Is this a sewer? Those things from before were simply unbelievable. Am I hallucinating again or is there another one of these Noah tricks? It's simply not possible for humans to move like that. And why would he appear all of a sudden? He even attacked me. Ugh, my head is pounding. From what I can recall, that lunatic enjoys torturing his prey in the dark. I hurt my wrist and ankle on the fall. I better fix these before he finds me again. Press tab to access your memos. Where your current tasks and files are. Prologue. Acquire hand part, foot part. Finish body restoration. Did I just see my hat run off? That, I must have banged my head up even more than I thought. I'm not leaving here without my hat. Understandable. Cool. Looks like a robot fell too. Took a fall too. Hmm. Did the steam scare it away? Oh no, I can use these valves and vents to release the steam. Probably this one. And this one. Oh, maybe not that one. This one. Aha. Thank you. Looks alright. I just don't feel right without my hat. Can I climb? No. Anyone here? A repair room in the sewer. Ten something unknown. Oh. What was that? It's a cat! It's you. How did you get here? Go play somewhere else. The last thing I need is more trouble. Meow. <laughs> uh. This must be the maintenance station. Used by pipeline workers before the place was abandoned. I should be able to recover my wounds from my wounds if I restore the power supply. But I can't do anything about it until I find enough mechanical parts. Without power, this repair station cannot be operated. Oh, okay, well, 
Let me guess. This cable is severed. I need to replace it. Yep. Yeah. The generator is completely dry. I need to find an alternate source to fire it up. I need to fill the generation generator with alternate power cells. There must be something around here I can use. In this locker! Everything's broken. What is this? Multifunction screwdriver. It can be used to dismantle machines, but it's all rusty. This is a robot. Yes. Universal robotic ankle part. A relic from a bygone age. Oh. A little blunt, but still usable. Electrical scissors. Something back out here I can grab. Probably that robot that was in the trash. Cat. Oh. Wait a second. Could this be? This power sack inside the cyborg rack is just what I need to fire up the generator. But William damages it with his teeth. There were three empty power slots in the generator, so I need to use at least three power sacks. Pretty sure I saw some rat holes near the place where I fell. Should go there and find a way to catch them. Let's go, William! Uh, one. Nope. This one. Professional mechanical wrist part of the surface. Some erosion. You've scared all the solid racks off. Now what am I supposed to do? What? You want me to go in there and catch some rats for me? Oh, you want to go in there and catch some rats for me? Meow meow. Are, are you sure? You completely mangled the last rat with your teeth. I guess you're my only option, right? Meow. I need three cyborg rat power sacks. Remember, you're not allowed to damage them. I'm counting on you. Do I, I take control of the cat? I do too. So, approaching them, I have to come up behind them. Okay. Energy cell. One of three. Yeah, I got you now. Another energy cell. Two of three. And we'll get him on the way out. The last one. I've got all the energy pouches. You can talk? <laughs> I've got all the energy pouches. Time to head back. You did it. You found three power sacks. And they're all in perfect condition, too. Don't get too cocky. You may have gotten these power sacks, but you're also the one who scared away the sobbled rat in the first place. Can I, like... Put these on? No, I have to probably, uh... Fix the... Power source. So... Go back. I've got three powers, so I can turn it on. Time to fill you up. This kind of power supply can only conduct energy with the sources arranged in order from the weakest to strongest. So. So if that goes to there... Just like that. Ah, this looks like a cable to me. Anything else over here? That seems invasive. It's spreading everywhere. I better not go that way. Okay. Okay, so repair this wire. That's now got power. Let's do this. Everything's ready to go now. 
I just hope it won't kill me. You can moonwalk really fast. The threads unravel. Wally? BBX? Same thing. Wakey, wakey, it's time to get up. Damn, you're so noisy. What the hell are you doing here, BBX? Do you know. Do you want me to throw you back into the furnace? I need to perform a routine check on your mechanical parts, it's four days overdue. Sure, whatever. Just wait for me to get over there and I'll come to you. Okay. Let's get this over and done with. Warning. Warning. Based on the test results, the mechanical parts of your body are about to collapse. How is that even possible? Didn't I just get new knees? There is nothing I can do about the test results. Take a look for yourself. You see, I didn't lie to you. Let me perform an overall maintenance. You do realize that you haven't changed any of my parts in the past two years, right? It's a miracle that I can still scan you at all, so stop making a fuss. Just, where am I going to find parts for a relic like you? In the museum? I should probably donate you to the museum so that you can be put up on display. Initiating self-destruct sequence. Calm down, I'm kidding. Head upstairs to the workshop and I'll give you a quick checkup. This place is haunted. What's wrong? Why are the lights off? Didn't I tell you to wait for me at the interchange section? I I think something is over at. There's something over at the armor. Oh, come on. You're a robot. That's afraid of ghosts. Just turn the lights on. The lights aren't working. I think the circuit downstairs has malfunctioned. Isn't there anything that still works in this place? Never mind. Let's find out what's going on here first. F freaky? Too dark ahead, I better not go further. Mm. I should fix the light first. This here. Why are the circuits so messed up? I need to rotate the wire to connect both par ports, not parts. Just like that. That's it. Time to go check on the workshop. Let's see what's going on here. Bet it's the cat. Ah, uh, this place real is haunted. Stop being so paranoid. One more crazy word and I'll disassemble you. According to my observations, I think it's a cat. A cat? Listen to that sound. It's dif difficult to hear, clearly, but I'm sure it's a cat meowing. That armor is stuck. I can't get it open. I need to figure out a way to save this little guy. According to the information I found in the archives, this armor once belonged to an ancient knight, and his spirit is said to live on inside the armor after his death. 
If the armor is separated from its weapon, the spirit will become enraged and place a curse on the one who dons the armor. It's true, the curse is real. A weapon? I remember seeing a claymore laying around, but I can't remember where I put it. Just like Arthur and the Stone. Hey, isn't that William? So, you were the ghost in the armor. How did you end up in there, you silly cat? Something isn't right about this armor. You're lucky you didn't get hurt. Go home. I don't have any dried fish for you today. Can we finally go to the interchange station now? It seems either the processor or the decoder isn't working. I remember seeing a processor on the first floor. There's no more decoders left, but it might be possible to get one from the other household appliances with a dismantling tool. Uh, the tool to dismantle the decoder should be locked in here, but I can't recall the code. I really need to quit drinking. Um, oh. Ah, okay. Yes, I, I read that already. Oops, it has it. Okay, so I need to find the numbers and then on top of that, use the specific little combinations. Why are you still here? Miss Perry is probably looking for you now. This little guy wants to play with me, but I better pretend I didn't see him. Huh. There seems to be a process from the box up there. I can't reach it. How do I get it up there? I need to find a way to retrieve that processor. Hmm. Um. Seven. Four. Three, two, two, one. Hang on. Seven, three, two, two. Seven, three, two, two. So it would be seven, three, two, two. So it'd be down, I, diamond, diamond. Down, down, I, diamond, diamond. Oh, hey. Universal electrical dismantler that can dismantle most mechanical parts. Alright, and they can check the household appliances. Universal digital decoder, smart device compatible, compatible with a wide range of electrical equipment. Hey there, little girl. Can you get that book, the box down from the bookcase? Don't give me that attitude. Have you forgotten who saved you earlier? I bet this kind of little thing just wants me to play with him. Um, take you out for a walk. Got what I'm gonna need, and I'll take you for a walk. Damn, seems quite keen to go outside. You want to have some fun outside, right? Once I'm done here, I'll take you for a walk. Just get that box down for me first. It was the cat this whole time. Nice work. So, um, 
The, the, here's that dried fish we agreed on. You don't want it? Alright. I know you want to go outside, just give me a moment to replace BB-8's faulty parts and I'll bring you right back. I'll be right back. I've collected all the parts I need. Let's go back to the workshop. Here's your part. I've replaced the broken parts. Now it's time to go to the interchange station. Nice. All the chips are fixed. Let's get those electrical... Uh, let's test the electrical signals. Match the frequency to preset shape by tuning the button. Turning the button. Just like that. That should do it. Let's restart BBX. How do you feel now? Hey, what's going on? BBX? Can you still talk? Damn it, it, it exploded. Um, BBX, are you still with me, buddy? Looks like BBX has activated its emergency hibernation mode. It's gonna cost me an arm and a leg to find mechanical parts. I'll have to buy the parts and fix them myself. Uh, time to head outside. Let's go, William. Did he just ditch me for a female cat? He was begging me to play with him just a minute ago. I guess gals before pals stands true, even for cats. Oh well. I need to visit the repair shop anyway. That's strange. No one's here. Oh, it's you. I thought it was a customer. I'm not a customer? Old man, do you have any cheap decoders or processors? I'm busy in the back. The second half of stuff over there. Go check it out yourself. I thought I did. Well, hold on. These prices are insane. Have you lost your mind? Calm down. I only sell good stuff, and good stuff comes at a price. Even so, anything you see here is at least 30% cheaper at market value. It's a bargain, really. And anyway, you should know that it isn't easy to find parts that are antique for that antique robot of yours. Don't suppose you can sell them for cheaper? If money is a problem, my offer for you to become my test subject still stands. I can compensate you with some parts. I can't believe you're still thinking about that. As I said before, there's no way that's happening. Alright then, come back when you've got the cash. And in the meantime, leave me alone. Whatever. William? You're back so soon? What have you got there? William bought over a piece of ripped cloth with blood on it. Whose blood is that? Are you hurt? I don't see any wounds on you though. The little guy's so anxious. Something must have happened. Since I can't do anything else for BBX right now, I should probably follow William and take a look. Let's go William. It looks like William wants me to go into the alley with him. I'll go there now. William? Is this your girlfriend? Judging from her fur, she seems to be a rare breed. Good choice, William. Did you just understand what I said? Wait, is that blood on you? Let me see, are you hurt? Weird, I don't see any wounds. Shit, a dead body. Been dead for a while now. Wait, I know this woman. It's Miss Perry. She's she's the landlord at the Sephora Apartments. I need to call the police immediately. Hello? 
I'm calling from the Sophia Sephora apartments. There's a body lying among the trash in the alley. Please, send someone quickly. Okay. Yes. Thank you. There must still be some evidence here. Since not many people come this way, I better look around before the police arrive. Clues and deduction. You have entered a crime scene. Carefully investigate every detail as if... As it could be a clue to solving the case. Switch from investigation mode to find out the traces of the scene. When you find all the traces, they'll combine into important clues to help you build a full conclusion. A final conclusion. So what have we got? Gash, possibly. Possibly hit with something blunt. Postmortem abrasions on the heel formed after rigor mortis is set in. Postmortem abrasions on left elbow. Dislocation of the wrist, a sign that of a fracture, possibly caused by falling down a strong collision or a strong collision after death. Liver mortis on the leg disappears when pressure is applied. Skin on the neck uh, exhibits a nickel allergy. Uh, left hand middle finger displayed on the displays a ring mark. Uh, liver mortis on the face, disciplines and pressure is applied. Uh, strange shape wound. There's a strange wound caused by the impact of some blunt, something blunt, most likely cause of death. Uh, traces of jewelry were worn on the neck and left finger. Signs of rigor mortis are different from the other areas. So the theft probably happened about four to five hours after death. Uh, there are scratches on the elbow and heel. They seem to be informed after death. The corpse was moved at the time of the theft. Interesting. Uh, liver mortis on the arm. Liver mortis, uh, liver mortis indicates the time of death is probably more than 24 hours ago. Um, or combined or first stage autopsy analysis it is estimated that the time of death occurred more than 20 hours ago the corpse suffered a fierce collision four hours after death and was dragged here the theft of the jewelry also happened at this time interesting some marks extended all the way from the corpse to under the dumpster. We need to move it to find out what's happened. More. Clear traces of dragging on the ground surrounded by footmarks. Judging from the footmarks, the person was thin in stature. Traces of dragging on the ground. There are clear indications of dragging on the ground. There are also some footprints and indicates the corpse was moved. Now the marks on the ground continue in this direction. I should follow them. To here. And the marks lead all the way to this dumpster. Hey there, little fatty. It's time to wake up. He's sleeping so soundly. I need something to distract him. The dragging starts from here. And there are more traces nearby. These footprints all seem to belong to the same person. Now the traces on the dragging the traces of dragging began here and both areas are surrounded by the same footprints. It looks as if the person hung around for a long time. Cat food. Oof, that smells funky.
Thank you, buddy. There's a new dent on the steel lid, which must have been caused by a heavy object falling onto it. There's a dent on the dumpster. There is a fresh dent on the lead of the dumpster, likely from a result of heavy object falling from above. Could this dent have been made by... And the investigation is almost complete. Let's see if we can reconstruct the case. Clues and deduction. Every clue you find on the case is just like a gear on the watch. Once you have found every clue and correctly combine them, these gears will mesh and you'll discover the truth. When you've collected enough clues, gears, deduce the meaning of them. Here, there's uh, when only all clues are placed in the correct spots, can you solve the case? Okay, so have footprints. First stage autopsy, traces of drag in the ground, and the dent on the dumpster. So, from start to finish, I believe is how it would go. So, I believe she would have fell first, right? And then, it would have been dragged on the ground. I don't know. First stage autopsy? No. Footprint on the ground. Oops, didn't want that one there. And this one. Here. At about 9pm yesterday when Mrs. Peggle fell straight from the dumpster, landing on the landing and denting the lid. Not long after a thief appeared and sought around the corpse for quite some time, or he, he or she hesitated. After that, the corpse was dragged into the trash pile, covered in garbage. However, the thief did not clean up the traces of the marks that were left behind. Judging from the time of death and the time of the theft, as well as the thief's behaviour at the crime scene, the thief is unlikely to be the murderer. A person was possibly attracted here by the sound of the fall. The thief committed theft on the impulse of after seeing a vulnerable valuable on the deceased. The deceased fell down on her from her own apartment. I might be able to find a way. Uh, I might be able to find out why Mrs. Perry was killed if I investigate the Sephora apartments. Have they finally arrived? Road, what are you doing here? Thought you'd been put, putting your feet up on that new lieutenant's desk of yours. Ha! <laughs> and I never would have guessed that you would be the one who reported the crime. It's been a while. Well, since you're already here, a big shot with time on his hands like you would have figured out who committed the murder by now. Care to enlighten me? Sir, the crime scene is under control under your control. Ah, uh, sir. The crime scene is under control. What are your instructions? Carl, come over here. I'd like you to meet a meet the famous Rex. He was on the force too. Hmm. Never heard that name before. Oh yeah. You're regarded as some kind of hero around the station. Although, personally, I'm not impressed by what I read in the history books. Carl! It's okay, Road. Don't mind him, Rex. Tell us what you found. Well, first off, I actually know the deceased. She used to be a friendly face in the neighborhood before her husband died. But, as for tonight, this is what I believed happened. So, I think our next course of action should be to investigate Mrs. Perry's home in the Sephora Apartments. I apologise in advance if you feel offended, but I think your reasoning is based unreliable on unreliable assumptions. I believe the right thing to do is to follow the actual clues, like the stolen jewellery. I'm not interested in your big time detective nonsense. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to get back to the crime scene. Oh, is 
his temper gives me a headache sometimes, Rex. Shall we find the find the apartment now? Hey, Elizabeth. Why are you here? What is that on you? Are these street cats bullying you? Poor Elizabeth. This child knows the white cat. Maybe she can tell us something. Hey, little friend. What's your name? Hello, sir. My name is Alice. Do you know this cat? Of course I know her. She's the prettiest cat of them all. And Mrs. Perry simply adores her. Do you know which apartment Miss Perry lives in? I need to visit her. Yes, I do. She lives in number 303, right under my place. In we go. We've finished our investigation here. Let's leave the rest to Carl and check out the victim's home. Are you ready to go upstairs? Let's go. So four apartments, floor one. Miss Perry must have been one of her supporters. Because this poster is in pristine condition. Hmm, there must have been. Ah, I read that. Mrs. Perry lived on the third floor. Can you hit the button? Up we go. Three oh three. This must be Mrs. Perry's place. I'll call a professional to unlock the door. Oh, don't bother. Let me do it. This type of lock design can withstand electrical tampering and forced entry. The only way to unlock it is to give the signal to the target by moving its discs. And there we go. Easy peasy. This half mechanical and half electronical lock can go to the museum now. Stay where you are and put your hands in the air. I've got you covered, Rex. Move up and check it out. Just like the good old days. Hello? Soft artificial fingers. Brand new shoes. Some hair belonging to the deceased. Wearing a clean and tidy servant uniform. The soles of the shoes were stained with Mrs. Perry's blood. All tra all it was tracked all the way to the sofa. Status code identification uh, indicates that it's sh it shut down. Dry blood stains. His hair, uh, the hair and blood are confirmed to be Mrs. Perry, so he's likely to be involved. Uh, judging from his clothes, his robot is an indoor servant worker who paid attention to manners and details. The crest indicates that he was working for the specific family. Robot suspect. Button hair have been detected on the robot, so I was involved in some way, but it's broken down here for no obvious reason. Relax, Road. It's in hibernation mode. That thing scared the hell out of me. I almost shot it. Wait. What's that on the couch? It's blood. Rex, take a look at this. Did you say blood? There's also blood on the hands and feet of the robot. Robots are unable to harm humans, so what's with all the blood? Let's check out the couch. There, there are dry blood stains on the front and back of the couch. The blood stains appear to be an attempt to clean up the blood splatter. This is Mrs. Perry's blood. It looks like 
a full 24 hours since the blood dried up. It's likely that Mrs. Perry was killed about 12 o'clock yesterday. Also, judging from the trajectory of the blood splashes, it was upward strike with a swing starting at a low angle. Let's assume this primary crime scene. I'll organize the information so we have so far. Meanwhile, let me know if you find something else. Blood on the couch. The blood in the stain the blood stain on the couch appeared to be around 12 p.m. yesterday, which is the time of Mrs. Perry's death. The attack was launched from a position lower than Mrs. Perry's height. Hmm. What is this? Looks like Mrs. Perry had a visitor before she died. Let's see what other information we can find. There are fingerprints and lip marks from Mrs. Perry on one of the cups. The other cup has marks left by a child. We need to find out who this is. Oh, the little girl. The visitor from yesterday. Um. Light candle. There's some intricate patterns. Should be another match. And prints. Mrs. Perry fingerprints. Fingerprints are located on the candlestick. From the looks of the candle, it's only been used for a short time. The missing candlestick. It should be a matching candlestick. It's most likely the murder weapon. Although the pattern on the bottom of the candlestick is similar to the shape of the fatal wound, there's no trace of blood there. The murder weapon must be another matching candlestick. It's not here at the crime scene, so we can't confirm that right now. We're pretty much done here. Contact Road to ex examine the next room. Hey, Road. We're done investigating here. Let's check out the next room. You can continue with the rest of the investigation. Carl told me they caught the suspect, so I better take a look. A suspect? Sure, I'll come over when I'm finished here. <clears throat> There's something peculiar about this set of cat paintings. There seems to be some hidden switches in them. Mrs. Perry's schedule. This could hold some important clues. There must be something in the apartment that can relate to the passcode. Oh, got a note. Mrs. Perry's gift for Jenny's birthday. Beautifully wrapped. A silver bronze key. Hey, not silver, a special bronze key. Diary. A small exquisite key. The last pages of Mrs. Perry's diary revealed that she hated robots. Interesting. The plot thickens. Two one two eight. Two one two eight zero four two one zero four two one zero four two one Hey Um Jenny's birthday, don't forget the surprise. Feed, feed little things, cookies and dry fish, feed little things, cookies and add water. Long, all day long, last minute. Election day, feed the things. Feed cutie. Vincent is visiting. Likes mocha cake. Ask him about a bully. Bitty. Jenny will come visit. Prepare for strawberry mousse. Lonely little girl, talk to her. Looks like Mrs. Perry's hatred for robots didn't extend to electronical appliances. 
According to her schedule, the only guest she had yesterday was a little girl named Jenny. Jenny? The electronic diary shows that the visitor yesterday was a little girl named Jenny. Is it Jenny Alice? I think that might be it. Miss Perry entertained her little guest until she yep, got stuck. Strike didn't kill her immediately, but her mother said so she died sometime afterwards. The robot entered the crime scene, dumped the body. The robot stopped working after it stayed there for an unknown reason. candlestick that was a murder weapon has been taken from the crime scene it is highly likely that the murderer has destroyed it i'll have to let the police investigate further the crime scene investigating is almost complete i wonder if that little guest was jenny i need to tell road bring her for info questioning there's something suspicious about the robot too i need road's authorization to carry out an internal core investigation the plot thickens even more! But, I think that's where we're going to end it. So, this is a very interesting game. It is still free on the game store until, I believe, the 9th of April. So, if you like what you're seeing, feel free to download it for yourself to continue the story. Alright, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.